Good morning. The Archbishop will bless the mercy door. This is in accordance with the Holy Father's uh, wishes that this year be a year of mercy for the church. So I'm going to ask you, if you would please, to go outside and gather outside. The Archbishop will bless the door, sprinkle it, open the door, and invite everybody to come into the church, and then he'll bless you on his way into the church. So if you would join us, he would appreciate it, and I will too. Thank you.
He's on A. The house is on A. Yeah. The wireless should be on there.
Good morning to all of you. And thank you very much for being here today. Bishop Cherie, my brother priest, and the women religious join me in welcoming all of you as we come together and as we begin this Jubilee Year of Mercy. We begin our prayer as always in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The mercy of the Father, the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Please respond to these invocations. Your mercy endures forever. Glory to you, Father, who forgives our faults and heals our infirmities. Glory to you, Lord, merciful and kind, slow to anger and abounding in mercy. Your mercy endures forever. Glory to you, Lord, you who are a tender father toward your children. Your mercy endures forever. My sisters and brothers, we gather together today to celebrate the Feast of the Immaculate Conception, but also we are very mindful that today we begin the Jubilee Year of Mercy that has been called for by Pope Francis. This morning at 9.30 Rome time, he said Mass, opening the Jubilee year, and then opened the holy door of St. Peter Basilica. It is a special door that is opened only in Jubilee years, and he blessed the door and then opened it as a sign of this year of mercy. He has asked that all dioceses throughout the entire world do the same. And so we are mindful what he did this morning and we reflect his prayer and his blessing upon this door. He reminds us that as we walk through this door that is blessed, together we seek God's mercy and we seek God's peace. And we promise that as we come to know the Lord's forgiveness and mercy, that we will share that gift with others in our community and in our families. And so these doors will be open always throughout this year. And those who pass through them do not just walk through a door, but we want them to be mindful that they walk through this holy door, seeking the Lord's mercy, his forgiveness, his tender love. We are mindful as we walk through this door that you and I are on a journey. We are a pilgrim people, and we seek this mercy and love which God has promised to us. It is in that spirit that we now pray. Bless the new Lord, Holy Father, who sent your Son into the world to gather our men and women wounded and scattered by sin. You invite us to be one body through the shedding of the blood of Jesus. Holy Father, you have appointed Jesus both shepherd and gate for the sheep, so that whoever enters may be saved, and whoever comes in and goes out will find pasture for eternal life. Grant that your faithful may pass through this gate and be welcomed into your presence, so that they may experience, O Father, your abundant mercy which you have promised to us through Christ our Lord. Amen. Open the gates of justice. We shall enter and give thanks to the Lord, seeking his love and his mercy.
This is the Lord's gate, but all who enter through this door find the mercy and the forgiveness of a loving God as we grow in the spirit of the Lord Jesus. Let us enter through this door into the house of the Lord. We invite you to now enter into the
May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us for our sin, and give us the strength and perseverance to walk this journey of faith, encountering the mercy that the Lord God has for us. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who by the Immaculate Conception of the Blessed Virgin prepared a worthy dwelling for your Son, grant, we pray, that as you preserved her from every stain by virtue of the death of your Son, which you foresaw, so through her intercession we too may be cleansed and admitted to your presence. For our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. After the man, Adam, had eaten of the tree, the Lord God called to the man and asked him, Where are you? He answered, I heard you in the garden, but I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid myself. Then he asked, Who told you that you were naked? You have eaten, then, from the tree of which I had forbidden you to eat. The man replied, The woman whom you put here with me, she gave me fruit from the tree, and so I ate it. The Lord God then asked the woman, Why did you do such a thing? The woman answered, the serpent tricked me into it, so I ate it. Then the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, you shall be banned from all the animals and from all the wild creatures. On your belly shall you crawl, and dirt shall you eat all the days of your life. 
I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers. He will strike at your head while you strike at his heel. The man called his wife Eve because she became the mother of all the living. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavens, as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, to be holy and without blemish before him. In love, he destined us for adoption to himself through Jesus Christ in accord with the favor of his will, for the praise of the glory of his grace that he granted us in his beloved. In him we were also chosen, destined in accord with the purpose of the one who accomplishes all things according to the intention of his will, so that we might exist for the praise of his glory, we who first hoped in Christ, the word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The angel Gabriel was sent from God to a town of Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And coming to her, he said, Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at what was said, and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of David his father, and he will rule over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. But Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I have no relations with a man? And the angel said to her in reply, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month for her who was called barren. For nothing will be impossible for God. Mary said, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. May it be done to me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The Gospel of the Lord. Some people go by many different names. Some of them are nicknames, others names that describe something about the person or about one of their qualities. And this is also true of Mary, our mother, whose feast we celebrate today. In fact, the litany of the Blessed Virgin Mary has 47 titles for Mary, and there are many more. Today we honor Mary under that important title, Mary Immaculately Conceived. It's a very important day for us in the United States because Mary under that title is the patroness of our country and also the patroness of Notre Dame Seminary and we are blessed by the seminary community being with us today to all the seminarians and faculty. The Immaculate Conception of Mary was declared by Pius IX on this very day in 1854. And he said, and I quote, In solemn ceremony we declare that the Blessed Virgin Mary, from the first moment of her conception, by a special privilege from God, was kept free from original sin. That dogma tells us that the evil of the world that we all inherit through birth did not touch Mary. Saint Pope John Paul II adds to this understanding in his encyclical, Rich in Mercy. He says, Mary is the one who experienced mercy in an exceptional way as no one else because God mercifully spared Mary from all of the effects of original sin that the rest of humanity have inherited. And so today's feast also tells us about God's mercy in general, but his special mercy and care and love for Mary. 
As God shared mercy and showed mercy to Mary, we call her as a church, the mother of mercy. And it's a title that we want to reflect on as we recall and begin this Jubilee Year of Mercy. Mary, our mother of mercy. And during this holy year, which we begin on Mary's feast, we ask Mary to lead us to her son, so that in leading us to her son, you and I will experience divine mercy. But we also ask Mary not only to lead us to her son, but to walk with us in our pilgrimage during this year. And we ask her to help us in three ways. First, we ask Mary to walk with us so that we can come to a deeper acceptance and appreciation of the mercy that God has already shown to you and to me. And we pray that we will continue to experience that mercy, that we will embrace it, accept it, and be overwhelmed by God's mercy in our lives. And indeed, we should be, as we are sinners. And God reaches out his hand and has in the past and promises in the future to heal and to forgive us. And so we ask Mary to help us to come to a deeper acceptance and appreciation of the incredible mercy that God shows. Secondly, during this Jubilee year, we ask Mary to help us, to pray for us, that you and I may forgive ourselves from all of our past sins. We are called during this year to be merciful to ourselves. Sometimes we carry around the sins of the past, even after confession. They burden us, they make us sad and sometimes depressed, and sometimes paralyze us spiritually and otherwise. And so in forgiving ourselves, we give this over for whatever it is that any of us may hold in our hearts that we have not forgiven. We give it over to the Lord and we let it go. Place it in his hands and in the heart of the Lord Jesus. And we are reminded that as the Lord Jesus forgives me, so I must forgive myself. As we accept God's mercy and as we forgive ourselves, we ask Mary to lead us that we will be better enabled and empowered to forgive others, to be merciful to others as God has been merciful to us, to forgive one another, to seek re reconciliation even when it hurts. Is there someone in my life and in yours that we need to extend mercy and forgiveness? someone for whom we hold a grudge or revenge. The year of mercy tells us that Mary will walk with us and bring us to her son for divine mercy so that we can show human mercy to others. My friends, we just opened the holy doors of God's mercy. And we are reminded again that as we walk through the door many times this year, we are a people on pilgrimage. We are a pilgrim people, walking together, supporting one another, seeking the mercy of God. And we ask that as we walk through that door, not just today, but throughout this year, we will open our hearts and our very lives to the gentle forgiveness and compassion and peace that the Lord Jesus can give. Pope Francis reminds us as we open the holy door that Mary and Joseph, as they were preparing to give birth to Jesus, knocked on many doors seeking a place to give birth. And many of those doors were locked. We have no room in the end. But Francis reminds us that God's door of mercy is always open and it's never closed. And during this year, we are led to the heart of Jesus. 
which is wide open, waiting for us. The Lord Jesus waiting to extend his hand and to run out, as in the parable of the prodigal son, and find us. Pope Francis reminds us that God never tires of forgiving us, never. But he says, we may be tired of asking for forgiveness. My sisters and brothers, as we celebrate the Feast of the Immaculate Conception, and as we begin this Jubilee year, once again we claim Mary, our mother, as the mother of mercy. And we pray together, Mary, lead me to your son and let me experience and embrace his mercy. Mary, Mother of Mercy, pray for us. Together we make a profession of faith through which we profess who we are and what we believe in. We say, I believe in one God. We now ask Mary, our mother, to pray with us and to pray for us as we bring our needs to a loving and faithful God. For the people of God, that we seek to follow Mary's example in bringing God's mercy to the world, let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. That all world leaders will work towards peace, that those responsible for war and violence, that they will have a change of heart and grow in respect for human life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For vocations, that more men and women may respond with open hearts to the call of the Lord to service in the church. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. That in this Jubilee year of mercy, we will open our hearts to welcome the King of glory who comes to us with gifts of pardon and peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who have died, may they find a place at the heavenly banquet. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the prayers that we hold in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us also lift to the Lord the people of San Bernardino, those who have died that they may have eternal rest, those who are recuperating that they may have health, for those who are in grief, and for all those who are the victims of terrorism, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Faithful God and Father, we thank you for giving us 
Mary, not only as the mother of your son, Jesus, but also our mother. We ask you to send her to walk with us during this year of mercy, that we may come to know you as a merciful God, forgiving ourselves and extending your mercy and love to others. And we ask this as we ask all things through Christ our Lord. My sisters and brothers, please pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Graciously accept the saving sacrifice which we offer you, O Lord, on the solemnity of the Immaculate Conception of the Blessed Virgin Mary, and grant that as we profess her on account of your provenient grace, to be touched by any stain of sin, so through her intercession, we may be delivered from all of our faults, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts, and let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you preserve the most blessed Virgin Mary from all stain of original sin, so that in her, endowed with the rich fullness of your grace, you might prepare a worthy mother for your son and signify the beginning of the church, his beautiful bride without spot or wrinkle. So the, so the most pure virgin was to bring forth a son, the innocent lamb who would wipe away all of our offenses. You placed her above all others to be for your people an advocate of grace and a model of holiness. And so in company with all the angels and saints, we praise you as we raise our voices.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. the mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, and with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Louis, King of France, and with all your saints, on whose constant intercession, in your presence, we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant, Francis, our Pope, with Gregory, our Archbishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, for whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, 
O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our own day, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, and blessed to those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should be used to enter my room, but only say a word, and my soul shall be healed.
an act of spiritual communion by St. Alphonsus Liguori. My Jesus, I believe that Thou art present in the Blessed Sacrament. I love Thee above all things, and I desire Thee in my soul. Since I cannot now receive Thee sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart, as though that were already there. I embrace Thee and unite myself wholly to Thee. Permit not that I should ever be separated from Thee.
Let us pray. May the sacrament we have received, O Lord our God, heal in us the wounds of that fault from which, in a singular way, you preserved Blessed Mary in her Immaculate Conception, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thanks to all of you for being with us to celebrate this great feast in honor of Mary, but also to begin our journey, our year of jubilee, a year of mercy. And as we go through this year, wait, may we remember that we have walked through this holy door and we are asking and seeking God's mercy and he has promised that his heart is open and that he will give that gift to us. I also want to acknowledge those who are with us today through the television media of WLAE and also those who join us through live stream. We appreciate your presence and your prayers. I thank also those who served in the various liturgical ministries a special thank you to Betty Ann Hickey, who works with us through the Office of Worship, and a very special thanks to Father David Karen, who is our vicar for evangelization, who has done so much work in preparing us as an archdiocese to celebrate this year of mercy. Also to Father Jim Wayne, the rector of Notre Dame Seminary, and to all the seminarians, thank you for being here and for giving us the privilege to be able to share with you your, the, the feast of your patroness. We now turn our thoughts to Mary, the Mother of Mercy. May her merciful gaze be upon us throughout this year so that all of us may rediscover the joy of God's tenderness and mercy. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Be merciful, just as your Heavenly Father is merciful. Go in peace. Thanks be to God.